We're up here at Derek Pitts' saddle shop in Condor, Alberta, and Derek is uh, going to show us around his shop and show us the mechanics of building building trees and building saddles and all that beautiful carving does. So let's go on in here. I'll give him a knock and hopefully he'll let us in. Hey, well, you made it, did we you? made it up here. Oh, you betcha. Man. Good to all see right. you. Yeah, come on in and have a look around. You bet. So we, we were talking before quite a bit about the, the mechanics of building the saddle tree and everything, and we've got some uh, parts over here. Derek, can you tell us a little bit about what we have here and, and how it works? Yeah, well this, uh, this is an old uh, Bronx saddle I got from Bill Severe. You'd give me that to kind of look at. And so this is, this is kind of what it looks like. This is a Bronx saddle, and you guys can tell it's a Bronx saddle because it doesn't have a horn. And this is what the tree looks like after you cover it with rawhide. After it's covered with rawhide. Okay. Yeah. But so this wood would be the skeleton, it would be what would be inside That's what? What's inside. This here is what we, we form. This is a weed, weed front end. So it's formed, rounded off, and the horn is shaped. And then when it's done, the bars are made like this. So you put that on like that. Okay, and this this would be over here on and this side, on the other side, and that sits down on the horse's back. Right, and then here's where the cannon fits. Right now, I haven't got a cannon wheel yet for this one, so, but that's the idea what the woodwork is. Okay, and so, then uh, then you cover that with rawhide. Mm -hmm. So, th like you said, this is just roughed out right now. There'd be some more refinement that you would oh, do on it by a bunch. On it, yeah. You bet. And then it'd be covered with rawhide. Yep. And then when it's done, it wound up looking like this. It has, a, yeah, it looks a lot like that. Okay. And as you guys can see, this is what the rawhide looks like when it all dries up and shrinks down. And this is all hand sewed. And it's really, really smooth. But that's what the inside of your uh, of your saddle looks like. And being that this is a Bronx saddle, like I mentioned earlier, it doesn't have a saddle horn on it. Derek, tell me a little bit about what you do over here. Well, this is my work area. This is my workbench that I build all my parts. I build all the things for the saddle on here, the different tools I use for each job. And I have, uh, like this is a breast collar that I have to make. And it'll be finished up here. And uh... We had a question when uh, we were driving up here, we were talking on Instagram like that, about le leather supply and uh, whether it's still readily available or is it getting harder to get or anything like that? And what kind of leather do you use? I use the Herman Oak leather and uh, it's, yeah, you can get it. It's still, there's stores up here sell it. And mm -hmm. Available, yes, it's, uh, for me, I, uh, I used to get it from the factory, but anymore it just seems like I'm, I don't build that much, have that much volume, so I don't. Right, but, uh, right. because everything you build is what you one, build is not, not, not a factory, time, yeah. you bet you one yeah. at a time. Yeah. Well, and you've got all these different tools here, and they all have their purpose. Uh, let me just, I'm going to pick one tool out, and you're going to tell me what you use it for. Right here. What do you call that, and what do you use it for? Well, that is a tickler. <laughs> tickler, okay. <laughs> it's a tickler. Well, let me show you here. Okay. When uh, something like this, if you have to form something, like you can use that. A lot of people use a tickler to sew in. So before you sew, you take and you run that around like that, and uh, it makes a, a groove. Don't cut anything, it makes a groove. And uh, you sew in that. Okay, Where so it shapes it, it doesn't cut it. It don't cut it. Okay. Where some people use a groove that cuts out a little slim line of leather, right. and you sew in that. That's, they call that a stitch groove. And the tickler, you can use them underneath here to, to form. It's, it's for forming. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. And you're serious. That's what they call it as a tickler. It's a tickler. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. So this is your workbench. Then if we look over here, what would we find over here? Well, what this, do you do over here? This is my carving bench. This is where I, I do all the carving on this bench here. My, my tools and, and I have a various amounts of tools here. So. Mm -hmm. And what's this stone here for? That is what you carve on, so you have a, a back backing to carve on. A really good solid a base. solid base to carve on, yeah. Okay, tell us a little bit about what on. you have here. Well, this is a fender design, and uh, just a display sign, uh, design actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
to show people what, what I do. So. so these are all drawn freehand, these flowers? These are all, yeah, these are my, my design. I've designed all this. You bet. So before, Derek, can you tell us a little bit, before you commit this to leather and carve it, what would be your process to get your design and then put it on your leather? Well, I design, I, I draw my design on this kind of paper, and then I trace it from there. I, I do all my artwork on this, various kinds, types of flowers, and then uh, I trans form it on the old, transport it over to here. And you take and you have a little, I use a, a really, really hard pencil. I like them for a, 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 a for, for transferring your pattern? Yeah, yeah. So you have, you, you have the paper, what kind of paper do you use? It's an art, a light art paper. Light art paper, yeah. so you lay it over and you have your drawing on your paper. Yeah. And then you press down on it and... It leaves an imprint on the on the leather. Do you dampen your leather? Oh yeah, you, well your leather has to be cased before you start off. What do you mean by cased? Cased is how you put it in water. I, I don't like to really soak it. I like to soak it till it's uniform and then I like to put it in a plastic bag and uh, then it cases in that plastic bag. Mm -hmm. If if I can't do it that day or I need to wait overnight, I like to put them, if you know you have to Say I want to get to work on this early in the morning. I'll put it between two pieces of sheepskin. Oh, really? So you use the sheepskin to wick the, the moisture off? Yeah, that sheepskin will case okay. that leather quicker than in a plastic bag. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So that's interesting. So you have the you put two pieces of sheepskin with a damp leather between it. Yep. And you just leave it overnight. Leave it overnight, and in the morning you set it out here, and it. It turns to, to the color I, I prefer to carve. Mm -hmm. That isn't dry. It's, it's still got a bit of brownish tinge to it. And I can carve that. It's easy to carve. And when it's carved, I can, you know, like it wouldn't take me all that long to carve all of this. Where what, it, what, what would you think it would, would take you to carve? Uh, all together on this, this here, good question. I'd have to sit down and, mm -hmm. you know. Would it take you a full day? To do this, yeah. they'd be stretching it. Yeah, you'd have to, I wouldn't be able to have it stamped. I'd be able to have it all carved, all carved out and prepared. Yeah. Yeah. And the next day it would, you know, it'd right. take a day to day and a half to finish. There, it there's so much involved. I, I hope the video that we're filming right now really can show this. And when you're talking about Herman Oak leather, mm -hmm. That's what gives gives this nice color. leather this beautiful the, color. The nice color, yeah. Right. And, and it's got a, it's got a texture and a feel to it, doesn't it? It does. It, it's got its own its hardness, its own mm -hmm. hardness, and uh, like I've I've used other leathers, and uh, I've the only other leather I ever used that I I liked as much was Schultz leather, mm -hmm. and that was back in the when I was still in Calgary. I brought two sides up here when I come up, and I bought that out of Kenway's. Right. And uh, I made a saddle out of that. And that was the last of the the Schultz. And Schultz, I, I they don't build them anymore, no. do they? But it was beautiful leather. It it was like this. It was actually a darker leather. It got darker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, cool. Okay, so when you get it when you get it all carved out and ready to go, I see you've got some sewing machines over here. Do you want to tell us a little bit about them? Which the good part or the bad part? Well, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, you have to be a good. And I've done enough of it to know that being a really good sewing whether it be shops or whether it be saddles or anything like that there's a way more to it than meets the eye and this man's a master at it and these machines here what, what do you use this one over here for what's this this for? is my all-purpose machine it's a pro juki pro 2000 and uh, i use it for pretty well all i uh, i have uh, you can put different needles in it you can put different thread in it and uh I like to kind of leave it the way it is, but every once in a while, if I have to make, say, a bunch of bridles or or uh, when, uh, Christmas time, you get a the press the Christmas present, right? So I usually set it up, and it's it's a good machine. It's just a really good all round machine. Yeah. Okay. And and I'll and just take a piece of leather and I'll show you. Okay. If. Uh, Find the piece, there you go. Something that you're not gonna use on another project. Oh. I don't want you wasting a piece of leather for us. I have a lot, I have barrels of this stuff. <laughs> I'm sure there. you do.
Yeah, this here's a pretty darn good machine. Good luck with her. And if you're thinking about speed on a machine, that's a good speed right, right there. Right about there is good mm -hmm. speed. Yeah. So you can adjust it for this size of leather, this thickness? Actually, the, the machine is incredible. It, this one here, I would have to do the top tension a little more. But it's incredible how you can get away with leaving it. I have it set for one. And use different thicknesses. And within it isn't. Like this is, I'm sewing leather this thick now. And it would probably uh, need a little adjustment. But uh, saddle parts, if I start on a saddle, I don't have to touch it. Really? Everything's pretty mm. well. So, yeah, that's definitely a good all around machine. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this old timer you got over here? This is a Randall. It's, uh, they're a great little machine. I, uh, they're kind of a, I used to have a Landis 3, which is basically that same looking machine as that, only they're quite a bit wider. Mm -hmm. But I sold that, I sold my rigging business, I uh, I sold the Landis with it. Okay, I remember that it, from this, years ago. Yeah, this come up and I bought it, and uh, it's a great little machine. What do you sew on this one? I sew smaller, I, I do sew spur straps, mm -hmm. and I can sew anything on it. Mind okay, you. so anything probably that Juki can do, you could do on this oh, one? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, How old do you think this machine is? Uh, without knowing the serial number on it, but it was probably made in the 30s. Okay. Yeah, late 30s. And where are they made, do you know? Uh, not offhand. Not offhand, okay. A, a lot of this stuff is old world stuff, you know. It was... I do believe there's a factory in them right now, and they're in Texas. Oh, okay, yeah. really? Yeah. And, and what's the name? It's a Randall. Randall. Right. Yeah. So we have a Juki and a Randall. And Campbell. then... Campbell Randall. Campbell Randall. <laughs> I remember the singer. <laughs> okay, this one right here, this little one, you use this more for shafts and that sort of thing. Yeah, right? that's about it. Yeah. 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 You see these around quite a bit. And then, this one right here... This is a, a Singer harness? A shoe patcher. A shoe patcher, okay. And what would you use this one for? Oh, I don't. <laughs> no? You don't? I, uh, I have it. If I needed, you know, you can sew so many things with it. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're in it, like you're, you know, sewing up different little items that have wrecked or shit. Yeah, doing repairs and that sort blankets. of thing. Blankets. Right. Boy, them blanks, old saddle blankets and pads and stuff, you can take that sewing machine and right in the middle of the of the job you can take and you can sew all around with it. Oh just by turning it. Oh yeah. You can go any wow. sew backwards and frontwards. And that way you don't have to run all that if you got a piece say you got a rip in your saddle blanket, you just group it up there to where the sew or the rip is. Mm -hmm. You can sew around with that thing. Cool. And this is called a singer patch. A singer patch. Really? Yeah. Very cool. And what's this story on this old timer? Well, you ought to know. You sewed on it. Yeah. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> this, this this little this is like a team of horses at times. You can have some runaways with this. <laughs> son of a guy. I can testify to that. Yeah, yeah. This is another just a good little all round one. It for is. Yeah. Shops it's and time, bags. After I used it for a lot of years, and I just kind of uh, got away from it. But you know, if you change, I changed the thread in it and started using a different kind of thread. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a dream. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? really I used amazing. to make a lot of, like, uh, rigging pads. Yeah, you've done lots yeah, of stuff on, on that. that. Yeah. To where, like, the, would go underneath the bareback rig, and there'd be a sort of a we rough out leather we'd yeah. use, and it was sort of a, a foam pad that oh, went underneath, yeah. like that, protect the horse's back. So, yeah. yeah, I sewed a lot of those on. Yeah, you made shafts on that, too. Yes, that's true. You betcha. Well, cool. Shelby, you should just kind of take a little pan around the shop and show the folks what this is just uh, eye candy. This shop is, is just beautiful to look at.